Good evening. I'm going to talk about energy, specifically sustainable energy. Energy kind of matters a lot uh, for everything we do in our daily lives. It fueled the transportation you use to get here. It powers your computers. It's actually what fires up your cell phones. The challenge is, what would we do here if we didn't have lights in this room? We would be able to do nothing. We are seriously getting the energy equation wrong. We're getting it very wrong. And we need to get it right. We need to get it very right, given the challenges we face. Now, what do I mean when I say sustainable energy? For some, sustainable energy is all about climate change. For others, sustainable energy is all about how do I get access to the energy I need for the development of my country? Let's think about the climate angle. Just recently, 34 mayors of communities around Miami, Florida, gathered together to talk about the risks that they face with rising seas caused by climate change. There are 2.4 million people in those communities who live within a few feet of high tide. They estimate that there's $65 billion of property that's at risk of flooding in the next 15 years, not 2100, in the next 15 years. Now, there are coastal communities and islands around the globe who face precisely that same risk. Now, there was an agreement reached in Paris on climate goals and objectives. We all know that. What you may not know is that 80% of the world's energy mix today is fossil-based. And under a climate change scenario that meets a two-degree target, by 2050, fossil will still be at least 40% of the energy mix. The system that we have today is going to persist into the future. And whether we like it or not, Fossil energy is going to be a significant share of that. We are not going to change this system unless we're prepared to fundamentally rethink it. But let's look over at the development side of the equation. There are 1.3 billion people in the world who do not have access to modern energy services today. Another billion have access but it's not very good quality access. Their priority is not climate change. And we have to recognize that there are a lot of individuals and countries who depend on the fossil industry for their welfare, for their livelihood. Now, the United Nations agreed to a set of 17 sustainable development goals. These cover health, education, pollution, Sustainable goal number seven is all about energy. But I would argue that it's underpinning attainment of all of the development goals. The Zika virus, one of the recommendations for how to deal with it is to avoid mosquito bites by staying inside in air-conditioned spaces. And the minute you're talking air conditioning, you're talking energy. So I would describe energy as the golden thread through all of the sustainable development goals. Now, the challenge we have is how do we integrate these two perspectives? How are we going to achieve those goals? Energy is at the heart of the matter. My proposition to you is that we need to move beyond the engineering culture that brought us to today, where energy is a series of commodities, and we've got to move to a services culture that will carry us into the future. Please note that I didn't say away from the engineering culture. I did say beyond the engineering culture. That's an important distinction for any engineers who are in the audience. Now, the telecoms industry is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Before, we had a monopoly system where they would provide communication services through fixed landlines. Suddenly, we break up the monopolies and a lot of things change, and today we have ICT, Information and Communications Technology, and it integrates 
audiovisual. It integrates communications. It in integrates all of the data management that we might want. Well, it's time for energy to join that party. But it's up to the regulators and the policymakers to print those invitations. Because right now, it's not happening fast enough. Now, my father used to tell me when he was a young man in Alabama that his family did not have running water or electricity in their house. Wind the tape forward one generation to me, and you find my own kids on the couch texting their friends or ordering pizza on a smartphone app. Certainly not doing their chores. <laughs> if I think about the progress that has been made in one century, I, for one, remain absolutely convinced that we can meet the challenges of climate change and sustainable development in an integrated way. Now, let me explore a bit with you that services concept. And I'm going to use the power industry, the electricity industry, as an example. But the thinking that I'm going to use can apply to all of the energy types. To talk about the energy value chain, and that's what it's called, you have at the beginning is the generation of electricity. It can be from a fossil power plant, a nuclear power plant, or from renewables. It's then transmitted over networks or distribution systems, repackaged, and then finally used by customers at the end. What I'm proposing is that there's a set of services that overlay that and that connect all of the different pieces in the chain. So you have quality of life, quality of service, and flexibility. And I will talk about each of those in turn. Let's start about quality of life. You and I are not consuming electricity right now. We are consuming lighting, some, heating, and in warmer climates, it'll be cooling. We use energy all the time in our daily lives. But at the end of the month, we're going to pay a bill for the BTUs we've burned or for the kilowatt hours that we've used. What they're selling me and what I'm buying are not the same thing. It's in the utility's interest to sell me more BTUs or more kilowatt hours because that's how they make their money. They are not set up to provide energy services. That's what happened to the telecoms. They had to figure out how to provide services, and that's a perfect comparison. The result of that is I am a utility end user, whereas I need to become the customer of an energy services provider. And that's the critical relationship change that I think we need to make. The result of that will be that customers will be get better quality of life and they'll get reduced costs, reduced prices. Even more, we'll stop using so much energy unnecessarily. Now, the health industry is going through a very similar introspection right now. How can we provide health to the population without necessarily providing more antibiotics? Is that possible? In fact, that's a lesson that most industries should learn. How can I give value without necessarily providing volume? So value instead of volume. So let me come back to the services concept a bit. Give me a menu of options with the prices that are attached. Do I want 18 degrees or do I want 22 degrees centigrade in my house? Does this lighting system actually work for me? If we are able to make that kind of a shift, then we're going to unleash a wave of in investments by energy service providers who've got the financing capability, they've got the technological understanding, and they've got a stable of trustworthy contractors who can make all of this thing happen. Then I'll have more efficient heating, cooling, and lighting systems. I'll have some kind of smart appliances who are able to manage their own consumption, possibly that of the entire household. I'll even get inv in investments in insulation. If we make that kind of a shift, the result is going to be improved energy efficiency, reduced costs, a lower environmental footprint, and man, talk about innovation. It will happen. 
Let me move now to the second aspect of service that I'm talking about, and this is where I said quality of service. We've all been in circumstances where lights start flickering. You might have a local blackout or a, a whole regional blackout. That's called reliability. Reliability is not a constant around the world. If you've got one hour in eight on your network, that's not reliability. If I've got a situation where there's pulses or collapses in the voltage on the system, that's not reliability. Now, there are a lot of technical terms for reliability. Let's call it quality of service. If I call up the utility and I've got a problem, how long will it take them to answer with a competent human being on the other end of the line? How quickly will they get a service crew out to repair a power line that might have need repair? I can list out a whole series of commercial and technical measures of quality of service. And what I propose here is that we change how companies are rewarded. Instead of cost plus, they are either rewarded or penalized for the quality of service that they offer. The result will be exactly what I talked about before. Better performance, lower costs, and a reduced environmental footprint. The third area I would like to talk about is flexibility. As you all know, there's been enormous investments in renewables over the last years. This has been supported by subsidies because there's a view that there's not, well, there isn't a real price on carbon, or because we have to level the playing field with fossil industry. Whatever the reason, today the challenge is, if I'm looking forward, how am I going to reduce the carbon intensity of the energy sector in an economically rational way? We want to get a system where we're bringing on the renewables and we're bringing on other low carbon solutions, but it has to work. If you've got renewables, they're going to be variable if they're wind or solar. You still have the variability on the demand side. With all of that tension that you're putting into the system, we need to value flexibility. We need to have power generators and customers who can stop and start and provide the services that an integrated system requires if we want this game to work properly. So let me put that in technical terms. We need to have properly structured balancing markets that value and encourage investments in flexible units. And those balancing markets need to be on energy market boundary basis, not on the political boundaries that are drawn on a map. So I would like to conclude by saying, as I said at the outset, the energy equation today is not working. If we want to meet the goals of climate change and sustainable development, we're going to have to rethink the energy system. If we start by thinking of energy as a series of services instead of a series of commodities, we will be able to do it. We will be able to improve the system's efficiency. We will be able to reduce the intensity, the carbon intensity of the system, and we'll be able to improve its accessibility globally. When I think of the progress that has been made since a child in Alabama studied by candlelight, I am convinced that this can be done, but we've got to get out of our seats and make it happen. Thank you very much. <laughs>